Spirituality creates influence in the church, but success gives you greater influence in the marketplace. And make no mistake about it, the marketplace is the primary concern for the expansion of the kingdom. Welcome to 83K Nation. Dr. Keith Johnson here, your Christian success strategist. This show is all about empowering you with the strategies, skills, tactics, and tools to help you reach your next personal, professional, and financial summits to increase your influence, impact, and income fast. When I surrendered my life to the Lord was September of 2015. That was when God got my attention, complete surrender, complete abandonment to him and whatever he wanted. And I thought that was the end. And you know, for a couple of years, he had to burn off a lot of dross, a lot of the, the pride, you know, self-made millionaire and this, that, and the other. And he had to just strip all of it and say, this is who you are in Christ. So there's the, the kind of the outward, what my life looked like, but then there was what was happening inside. Hello, 83K Nation. Man, we are so excited that you have joined us here today. Thank you for joining the broadcast. Man, I'm gonna tell you, you're not going to miss a moment of this. You know, we've been talking a lot about how God wants to use you to be a change agent in the culture. And here's what I know. It's one thing to look at our nation and see all the bad things that's going on in it. And it's another one to say, hey, God used me to be a change agent to turn it around. And one thing we got to realize is that God wants to change the culture of America. And how do you change a culture? Well, first of all, you got to start with the mindset of the culture and then you can move into changing the behaviors of the culture. And you see, it's not enough just to attack the behaviors until you first begin to change the mindsets of the culture. So we have to attack the mindsets. And we know that the United States of America was founded on a biblical world view. And because the United States was founded on a biblical worldview, America thrived and America prospered. But as we've continued to move away from our roots and moved away from a true biblical worldview, sadly, we see right before our eyes how the church has lost its influence Slowly but steady, we've lost our influence in the world. And I believe it's time to get it back. And one of the reasons why we've lost it is because the church has divorced itself from the culture. And one of the things we got to realize is we got to re-engage the culture again. And when you talk about mindsets, there's seven mindsets that mold how a group of people think. So meaning there are seven influencers that shape how a whole nation thinks. One of them is the church. The second one is family. In the old days, those two influences were the predominant influencers of the old culture. But now things have changed. It's not just the church and the family. Now it's government. Now it's business. And it's education. And one of the prominent two is the media and the arts. And unfortunately, the church has divorced itself from those other six important mind-molding areas of society. We've divorced ourselves from it. We've exited from it. And whenever we exit from something, let me tell you, evil will rush in. And evil will take over to gain leadership over the thoughts of people. So what do we got to do? We got to re-engage the culture in these seven mountains, these seven spheres, these seven mind molders, whatever you want to call it, so that we can begin to influence them with a godly biblical worldview. 
Now, we don't change culture by attacking the culture. That's not how we do it. The first step at, at ground level is moving in and beginning to work to change the mindsets. Once we change the mindsets, then we can change the behaviors which actually create a culture. Today we have a very special guest, a man that has already done it on one mountain called the Business Mountain. Very successful man as a CEO of two companies. One company uh, that he ran sold the most products in the entire world. Wow, <laughs> that, that's huge, man. We, 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 we don't bring you people who play games here. We, we bring people who, who have proven results. Not big talk, but proven. And this man has proven results of he's already climbed the business mountain and been an influencer amongst business people. And now he's looked as a businessman and saw the conditions of the nation and said, you know what? I believe God is calling me to run for the president of the United States. Now, listen, I don't care what side of your the political thing that you hang your hat on. I don't I don't care about that. One thing you should always do, no matter who the person is, Democrat or Republic, you got to respect somebody who has the guts to lead not be led, who has the guts to share their truth. And so today, uh, I'm honored to have Roland Roberts, who's, who has put his bid in to run for, for the President of the United States. Hey, Roland, how you doing, my, my friend? Great to be with you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Oh, man, it's great to be with you, man. I, I kind of set, set my audience up to kind of shape their minds a little bit about you. But, but tell me a, a, a little bit about your history before we go into, like, what are you doing now? Kind of paint me a picture, like, where were you born? Where were you raised? How were, was your mindset uh, kind of set and determined early on growing up? Well, it's interesting to see that thread that God has woven throughout my life because it's certainly not something I ever thought would land us where we are today. Uh, I grew up in a holler in West Virginia, uh, and my father is a pastor. Uh, he's been here for 40 years. Uh, he is the administrator of the Christian school, so very small uh, ministry uh, back in the 80s, and today God has really blessed it. But uh, I ran for state Senate in 2012, and that, uh, you know, helped inspire my father, I think. And uh, he ended up becoming a state senator in West Virginia uh, and has now been reelected twice. And so he's the uh, assistant majority whip for their super majority uh, Senate. And uh, so it's been a great thing. Now, he's still a pastor full time and is still the administrator. So even if he has meetings, for example, or Senate session on a Sunday for a special session, He'll preach Sunday morning, drive an hour to the state capitol, be in his meetings, leave the state capitol because they have Sunday night church and Wednesday night church. We're still in the holler in West Virginia. So he has to get back to preach that night. And then sometimes we'll even go back again for meetings that last uh, maybe until midnight or so. So uh, that's kind of the cloth that I was cut from was hard work, values, integrity. Uh, that work was the reward, not necessarily how much money we made from it. Uh, or what we got from it, but the satisfaction of doing uh, all to the glory of God. And so, uh, and then I went off to Bible college. I actually got my bachelor's degree from Crown College in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, and then I was in the corporate world all during that time. I was investing in real estate when I, uh, when I was 18 years old. Uh, of course, I had nothing. We started with nothing. I paid my way through college. Uh, and so it forced me to get creative but I also discovered some gifts and abilities I didn't know I had uh, just growing up in the holler. So that's kind of where I've come from. Then I went into the corporate world and, uh, and then God took me into government after that, uh, starting actually in 2016. Oh, that's awesome. Now I got a question for you on that because, you know, typical old church, right? Like in, in old church, old mentality, like if they would have seen a sharp young man, like yourself and they they saw that you had any potential at all right 
everybody in the church would say, you should be a pastor. You should be a pastor. Did, did, question, did that happen to you? Well, obviously, you know, or evangelist or something. Uh, and I think that's why I went to Bible college, because it, in West Virginia, everyone just went to the coal mines. That was the thing to do whenever I was growing up. You don't go off to college. You don't do those things. You just go to the coal mines. In fact, if you did anything else but go to the coal mines, you were kind of seen as arrogant, uh, above trying to be better than, than others. Uh, but I did believe that if I wasn't going to do that, that by being, you know, going into ministry was the only other option. And so that's where I went to Bible college, but that's when the Lord had to show me business tree and that, uh, uh, he can call us to a number of things. And that's when he really allowed my gifts to come out. But, you know, speaking of growing up in a country church, uh, I trusted Christ as my savior when I was five years old, but mm -hmm. I can tell you from getting, from trusting Christ at a young age like that, as I grew up, I didn't know what full surrender was and what it meant to me. And so I kept going my own way, my own path, certainly in business. And the more success I had, I just kept writing that. I did what I thought other successful CEOs did. I lived much of the lifestyle, not all of it, thank the Lord, but much of the lifestyle that a, a typical CEO would live uh, that has a lot of money coming in and the planes and the, 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 the vacations and, you know, everything. And instead... Uh, it took me off track. And so I actually, the, when I surrendered my life to the Lord was September of 2015. That was when God got my attention, lock, stock and barrel, complete surrender, complete abandonment to him and whatever he wanted. I said, I don't care if I'm never a CEO again. I don't care if if you never let me, you know, uh, just have another day on this earth. I just want to live for you. I have squandered too many years and I surrendered all. And I thought that was the end. I really thought that would be the end. And, you know, for a couple of years, he had to burn off a lot of dross, a lot of the the pride, um, a lot of the self-reliance, you know, for, for a couple of decades, he was speaker and, you know, self-made millionaire and this, that, and the other. And, you know, look at this guy. And, 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 and I rolled with it. And he had to just strip all of it and say, there's, there's, this is who you are in Christ and uh, find that identity and serve me and not try to, to, to figure out your own life and to steer it, but just let me have my way with you. And, uh, and that's what he has done. And that was a confusing journey, uh, but a fully trusting journey, a journey of faith. So there's the, the kind of the outward, what my life looked like, but then there was what was happening inside. Yeah. What do you think as far as that part of the journey, right? Because, uh, when, when, when you look at that, like a lot of people get scared of becoming wealthy, becoming successful, uh, you know, because on the other side of your story, there's people who hear these kind of stories and like get scared. They're like, oh, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get rich and be a CEO and have an airplane and drive cars because I might get tempted too, and I might abandon the Lord, you know. And, and, and a lot of that has paralyzed some people to even believing that God wants them to prosper. God wants them to be wealthy. And I mean, you, can, you, you can't influence people in the business sector if you're the janitor of, of the company. <laughs> you know, it's a false correlation it, to, to say that wealth is why you're not following the Lord and trusting him and leaning on him and not on your own understanding is it's a false correlation. It's what most of us did or many people do, but it's a wrong uh, uh, parallel. And here's why, because it wasn't the things that kept me in that space. Uh, conversely, when I fully surrendered to the Lord and he did take a whole lot, he stripped me of, of, of so much uh, just to humble me and then get me to fully rely on him. Uh, but it got to the point where actually he was then able to do much greater things than I could have ever done in my own strength. So whatever lifestyle I had as a CEO was what I could do. I Roland Roberts in my own strength and brute force running for Senate my own way with what I know with my intellect, how to build a billion dollar brand and how to run a billion dollar company. Mm. I'm going to run a campaign. I can smash this, you know, look at most politicians. I wouldn't hire them to be a supervisor, you know, in a restaurant, much less run the country. So I thought this is cake. I can steamroll this. And, uh, and I, I did great in my own strength, but it, but it was small time. 
And it was only years later when I fully surrendered to the Lord and he took me through the fire that afterwards he ended up putting me in places I never imagined. He far greater uh, than where I ever belonged, quite frankly. In fact, what I learned is when you're following Christ in business or in whatever the path that he has for you, he doesn't follow the career ladder uh, of promotion, 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 and just kind of the stair step. It's very much a Joseph moment uh, where he takes you from here to here uh, and or a David moment from the field tending the sheep to facing Goliath. You think you're taking lunch to your brothers. You're actually going to fight Goliath. And that's the way he has moved and worked, you know, in my life. In fact, he's brought greater abundance now, but it never was about that. And it hasn't been about that. And, and it still isn't about that. We Because the fire that he took us through was so deep and so profound that uh, it, when he stripped us of all of our identity, in fact, it's one of the hardest things about running for president, was I said, Lord, I don't know how you can be elected president if no one knows your name. But my objective in running for president is not for my name to be known, it's for your name to be known. First Kings 860, that all the earth may know the Lord is God. So I don't know how you do it, but would you do it? Wow, that's that's awesome. So what I'm hearing is, you know, basically Deuteronomy chapter eight, where God says, hey, when you get into the promised land, which that's that's always about the wealthy place, when you get into the, that wealthy place, don't forget the Lord your God is the one who who got you there. And the temptation is what I'm hearing is ego. Like, like ego says, I know everything. I know how to do this. I got this. And your ego gets big. And when, you're, you know, when your ego gets big, that's when you edge God out of speaking to you and giving you direction. He's like, okay, you got this. Go ahead. And you know, <laughs> It's like the lean not on your own understanding. But look yeah. at Moses. It, it, and this is one of the things in business and in the other pursuits that the Lord has had me in over the past uh, several years, my biggest concern was that I would do what Moses did the second time uh, when he smote the rock instead of speaking to the rock, because in business, we get very good at execution. We get very good. We know how to get results. I know how to get the outcome. So whenever you put an outcome and, and an expected end in front of me, uh, I know how to achieve it. The, and that's also the problem. I know how to achieve it. And Moses knew how to get water from the rock. The problem was the method wasn't God's method. It, God wasn't about the outcome. He was about the process uh, that Moses used to get it. And a lot of times we go, oh, I've been at this crossroads before. We've had this problem before. We've had inventory levels at this before. We've, we've been at scarcity levels before. Uh, I've seen the economy in the market and inflation this way before. And here's what we need to do. And you go forward in your own strength. And you may get the result, but I promise you it will cost you, just like it did Moses. So that's what I, the, the reason I rely on him for, uh, for all of the decisions every day, regardless of how many times I've seen them before, no matter how many times he's brought me through them, is how he wants the problem solved may look very different. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 hear, I hear, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth. That means God is speaking to us. The king is releasing mandates and instructions every day in our life as leaders. And it's our responsibility as kings to take a knee and say, God, I need your direction. And what I'm hearing from you, which I like, I like this, because a lot of people think long process. This is going to take me forever. But what I'm hearing is you say is if you listen to God, God can quantum leap you. You can skip levels, skip some processes, <laughs> and not have to do it the hard way. If you really just surrender to God and listen to him, he'll direct you. And is everything that, in life, there's man's way and there's God's way. Everything yeah. spiritually, there's in everything in business, everything in government, uh, and the problem, that's the constant uh, tension, uh, is that you know the 
common sense and the practical things and the way that he does use knowledge and he says it is good. You get wisdom and with wisdom, get understanding and get knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. I, you know, it's important to be educated and to, to understand what's going on. I mean, that's why later on down the road, I got my MBA from Liberty university. I got an earned doctorate from California and continental university uh, in business uh, and entrepreneurship and, and leadership. Uh, it was part of the, the, uh, the MBA, you know, but, so you, you, you get what you can, but then you have to surrender it all to him and say, I know nothing. Everything has to be guided by you. Uh, when that happens, uh, he can he can then place you and use you. Until then, you have to play by man's system. You have to play by man's rules. And nobody ever wins that way. Steve Jobs in his mother's garage, even, even Bill Gates and others, to for them to beat my, uh, IBM, the Goliath and behemoths of their day, uh, the for a small company to beat a little company, you can't play by the big company's rules. Uber wasn't going to take out ta the taxi industry by playing and competing and starting their own taxi cab business. They had to change, fundamentally change the rules of the game in order to win. Airbnb, same thing. And uh, that's the only way God leapfrogs us is when we are completely surrendered. His school looks very different than anything else on earth. I remember 2017, uh, the U.S.-China trade war was, was heating up. President Trump was supposed to meet President Xi Jinping for the first time on a Saturday. Uh, China, I was keynoting Bloomberg's annual conference that year in Shanghai. Uh, the Beijing government, uh, Chinese government, asked me to come to Beijing three weeks early and address their communist congress and leader, business leaders uh, in, the na in the country, in the Great Hall of the People. Uh, which is which is very rare for an American to be allowed in, much less to uh, speak and address. And I remember someone after that unbelievable experience telling me, they said, how did you get that gig? And I said, wow, you do not understand at all how God works, because for the last two years, he has had me under a pebble. Like I was a nothing, nobody worm. He was burning off every dross, everything I thought I was. He had me serving people. I was doing CEO entrepreneur huddles. I was doing CEO cruises. I was pouring and helping everybody else start companies and start businesses and just pouring into other people uh, during that time, thinking that I, I would be unknown and just continue that way for the rest of my life. And then I got that invitation to speak in Shanghai. And then Beijing said, well, since you're going to be in Shanghai, why don't you come three weeks early? and uh, address us and and people th how'd you get that my answer truly i don't know i don't know how they heard of me i don't know why they would ask that but i but i saw god's favor and i saw uh how he had me in certain places at certain times where someone along the way saw something in me that i did not even see in myself and and, and i trust that was the countenance of the holy spirit uh uh, touching them and, and encouraging them to have me. So it that is what I've seen God do over and over and over. And then, of course, when he called me to run for president, that was the hardest thing because I had been on the U.S. delegation to South Sudan. Even last November, uh, eight and a half months ago, I was in Juba uh, with one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with the president and uh, some private meetings there. And I'll tell you, uh, it got some things got very uh, serious while I was there uh, last August, almost one year ago. Uh, I was with the U.S. delegation in South Sudan there, uh, six Congress people, three ambassadors and me. And uh, there was there was a moment there when I saw that we weren't doing right by them. Uh, we were doing some things that weren't right, corruption, and then we're sanctioning them for being corrupt. And that's what. Uh, God really used to start birthing this seed in my mind and my heart. I didn't know it, and, and it wasn't confirmed until November when I realized that I was surrendering to go to my death. Uh, it was a, it was in a moment like that, and I said, Lord, if that's what you have, I I, I accept this calling. I have thought that surrendering to you might end in, in my life, uh, you're re requiring it of me. And so it is yours, all of it. Whether I live, I live under the Lord. Whether I die, I die under the Lord. Whether I live, whether I die, I am the Lord's. So if this is what pleases you. And uh, so the Lord decided to preserve me, though, through there. And I made it safely home. And I can tell you that in that in those days of prayer and fasting following that, 
Uh, I And then, of course, the Lord calling me to run for the presidency. I found that it was easier for me to surrender to go to my death than surrender to run for president. <laughs> and, and it was easier to, to give your life than to be the punching bag and to put yourself out there for everything that comes with this, the harassment and so forth. Uh, and that was harder. Uh, people think it's something to aspire to. And I used to say you had to be crazy uh, or corrupt to run for president. And now I realize there's a third, you, you have to be called. <laughs> wow, I love that, I love that. Wow, accepting a calling that is so much bigger than what you even think at this moment that you can achieve. In my mind is the beginning of growth. Like, it's kind of like the first time of my, one of my mentors said to me, Keith, you need to set a goal to become a millionaire. I had $247 in the bank. <laughs> I'm like, a millionaire? And he said, he said, yes, not for the material possessions or the money or the power. He said, but for the person you'll have to become in order to achieve such a lofty goal. Wow. And so I wonder, I wonder, as you're talking, I'm sitting here looking at these seven mountains. If, if we say spheres, we can say mindsets that need to be molded and changed, whatever you have, whatever your word is for it, unless we're at the top of these spheres of influence, we're not controlling what's going on. And we, and Christians, believers have to climb to the top. And that's where what Roland is saying, like, you got to accept the call to climb. And, and I think too many people are just, they're like casual with life. They, they don't have any goals. They don't have any aspirations that are so huge that, man, man, I need God to help me. I need to grow as a person to be able to achieve that. And even if I never achieve it, I have grown inside. At the end of the day, it's all about growth. At the end of the day, I've grown inside and I've become somebody better because of it. So I, 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 love, I love your spirit, brother. I love, I love what you're talking about. And I'm, I congratulate you for accepting the call to say, God, I'll go. I'll go. And God always rewards obedience. And no one will ever go wrong, whether it's starting a new business, whether it's going into a, a higher calling. Uh, they'll never go wrong following the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, that, that's where I see, uh, Roland, there's so many people like in, I know God's calling into business, like they're stuck in jobs. <laughs> so, you know, and inflation's out of control, price of housing's out of control, gas is out of control. Uh, I mean, it's crazy, and, but people are still looking to Pharaoh, to the world system, and trying to survive on a job making 15 bucks an hour, it's impossible. And, and I believe God's calling business leaders. I, I, I believe God's saying, come on, come out of that system, have the guts to start a business and I'll bless it. I'll put my hand on it. What do you think about that? Speak to some of our business people who are sitting on the fence and help them out with that a little bit. You have a lot Here's of experience. All Here's all I would say. The, the, the choice is between walking by faith in the desert, in the wilderness, or going back to Egypt uh, where you've got the garlics and the, and the cucumbers waiting on you, uh, but you're enslaved. And I'm telling you, the, the reason you don't want to walk in the wilderness is because you got to walk by faith. It changes your life. You get used to shoes that don't wear out. See, right now you're walking by 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 sight and you're walking uh, by, by Egypt's rules. And so you get a new pair of shoes whenever they wear out and things like that. When you walk with God, doors open that you never thought would open. Mm -hmm. The impossible does it. Uh, so you have to choose to walk by faith. Are you going to step out of the boat? Are you going to trust him? But once you step out, you're going to start to sink because you get on circumstances because you're so used to Egypt where everything's led by sight and by what you can see. 
but you will learn in the wilderness to keep your eyes on him and you will walk on water uh, and do what you never thought uh, possible. Just like give God your five loaves and two fishes. He'll multiply it and you'll have 12 baskets left over. Wow, that, that's huge. So uh, Rowan, uh, <laughs> we talk about that, right? We got to talk about money. Uh, here, here you are, right? You're running for president of the United States. And uh, uh, I, I looked up a few things on the estimate of what it cost to run a campaign. What, but I know what the internet's saying. What are you figuring in your mind like you gotta, you got to generate support? What's, what's the figure that you really need? Well, to, to, to win, the conventional wisdom is $100 million what I, is the starting point of what you have to have to, to go. Uh, I can tell you that we're not running a champagne campaign, <laughs> we, but we're not running it uh, bootstrap either. Uh, what we're doing is running, a, we wanted a spirit-led campaign. So everything we're doing, I told him, I said, I can't use Saul's armor to fight Goliath. So you're trying to put give me the sword and all of the normal things that a politician would have to go uh, win a primary and to win the presidency. And I'm telling you, the, 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 the shoes don't fit. The spirit is too heavy. The, the helmet doesn't fit. And I'm going to get killed if I try to run with Saul's armor. I have to use what God's put in my hand, my little slingshot, these stones, and uh, and just obey God. So, but God has been good. Uh, so one of the things is, you know, we've raised more than actually former pre uh, Vice President Mike Pence. Uh, you know, we're over 1.248 million. And uh, we expect to raise several more million in August. But here's the unique thing. When I look at the budget for our campaign, it's a fraction of what I believe we will have by the end of August that carries us for the next six months uh, to execute on the strategies that God's given us. And there it's unique. It's different. But it's for such a time as this. He's doing new things. And we're not trying to put new wine in old wineskins. And so uh, it's just like in business. I'm not playing by the, uh, the, the, the 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 big elites in the establishment, what they put forth of this is how the game is played uh, because that uh, is man-made. And what we want is God-made. Daniel 2.21 says, he setteth up kings and removeth kings. So uh, he doesn't say the electoral college does. He doesn't even say the voters do. He said he does. Now that he'll affect hearts, uh, obviously, in order to accomplish his will on earth. Uh, and so that's the way we're moving and operating. But everyone on our leadership team understands that God is is leading us in a unique path. We're not how we campaign doesn't look the same to other people. Uh, it's not for everyone, but it is the gifts that God has given us. It's the right message for this time, which is an America without God will fail. I want people to, to your point during the opening monologue to vote God over party. Trust God over your 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 party. Uh, this is a matter of God. What do you want? What, where do you stand? What is you, what do you want in America? And we know that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. He also promised that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. You can have all the best policy in the world from every party, from, from, from the brilliant minds and the greatest think takes on earth. And the greatest policies that are enacted will fall flat on their face if God is not acknowledged in America again. Wow, that's awesome. I love that. I love that, man. What what I'm hearing from you is, you know, a few things. In order to do it God's way, you got to think different. You got to think faster. You got to come up with ways of doing things easier. And you got to come up with a better a better blueprint, a better product, a better way of living and uh, and i think a lot like we apply this also to business and and things i think if a lot of you have to ask yourself when you start anything like how can i do it different how can i do it faster how can we how can we make something easier like you said uber like oh man instead of waiting around walking a mile where the taxi place is i can grab my phone and i can type something in and i can get a ride on no, uber Johnson, if they're gonna start a painting business Figure out how to make it unique and better. Make all of your trucks, if you're a female and you're getting the paint, make them all pink. Or if you're starting an auto repair shop for women because they inherently mistrust a lot of them, 
uh, then, then, then have a unique value proposition, a unique brand, a unique message, treat them differently, but be different and be better. Uh, that is, no matter what area of life God calls you to, uh, that's how we resonate. We started rolling college in Africa, the Kingdom Business School of Entrepreneur Business Entrepreneurship. We graduated 2,451 students last year on the African continent alone. It's because we did it different. And one of the members on the delegation, a former congressman, said that our model for education in Africa is what he thinks that will be the future model of education in the United States. Completely different. But people have to look at everything in life, not through the lens of what we've been told, not through everything we think is normal and standard, because it's not. There wasn't even a Department of Education until 1912. So it's even this is a big experiment. It's wow. not the norm in the course of human history. So look, yes, there is. The, we want the knowledge of the holy. Remember First Samuel when he gave the men of Issachar a greater understanding of their times. I think every business person uh, and every believer ought to be seeking the Lord to give them a greater understanding of their times. Wow. Well, hey, thank you so much, man. You are just giving so many great nuggets. And I know my whole audience is just really going to enjoy this. Uh, if you want to know more about, about this man, uh, you feel like in your heart that you'd like to get behind him and support him, you can go to www.rollandroberts.com. That's R-O-L-L-A-N. R O B E R T S dot com. Go check him out. See what his message is all about. His website lays out exactly what he believes, what he's trying to do. Uh, and, and, and go check him out and hear what he's got to say. Uh, I'm looking forward. I would love, I'd love to get you. We, we have a school called destiny college international where we are training, uh, world-class leaders all over the world. Uh, in business, in education, in, in media, the arts. That's what we're all about. And may I'd love to collaborate with you and see if maybe we could get you to uh, do a couple classes with us and uh, plug some of those in. That would be super duper exciting. Now is the time to take your mountain for God. Destiny College International exists to educate thousands of world-class leaders with the confidence, competence, and character needed to succeed in today's changing world. DCI is an online institution that rewards you for the work that you've already invested in the kingdom. If you've served in the ministry or led in business for a minimum of five years, you may qualify to receive a free bachelor's degree to put toward your master's or PhD. Scholarships are being rewarded for a short time. To see if you qualify, apply at destinycollegeonline.com. Don't wait for someday. Take the call of God on your life seriously and get started today. Before we go, uh, obviously you're running for president. That's what's on your heart. Do you want to speak just for a little bit, just maybe... I guess your, your, your stump pitch or whatever you want, however you want to call that, what kind of what's on your heart, what you'd like to communicate as far as uh, motivating people to say, Hey, this is what I believe. And this is why I want you want to ask you for, for support to help me to become president of the United States. Well, I appreciate that. You know, the bottom line is there is a war on America, a war on God in America today. Uh, they call wrong right. In fact, they celebrate what is wrong and they demonize what is right. Uh, we call good evil and evil good. And I'm running to do right by America, America's citizens. I'm doing running to do right by the people and nations of the earth. And I'm running so that we can have the blessing of God on America once again. Ultimately, I believe that an America without God will fail. And God, whether it was Sodom and Gomorrah, whether it was Nineveh, he always sent a person uh, who would be that, that stalwart and be, stand in the gap and give the people an opportunity to vote for righteousness. Rarely do we have a presidential candidate where we get a chance to vote for righteousness. Uh, usually we have to plug our nose and choose the lesser of two evils. I really believe that God is giving the church, his church, his bride, the opportunity to remove that excuse 
from uh, forever again, forevermore to say we did not have a chance. And I understand what that means because God has lost uh, Jesus. He's lost a couple of elections. He lost his first one with Israel in the Old Testament when he said, uh, do you, uh, I'll be your king. And they said, no, we want a physical king. And he said, well, I'll be your king. But if you want the physical, I'll give you that. They said, we want the physical. He lost his first election uh, right there. And I, and I tell you over and over, we choose the world. We choose other things instead of choosing him. But if the time is coming, we, I do believe we are in the last days in the end times. And I want him to find me being obedient. And I believe that there is a remnant of people who want to see righteousness exalted in the land. And you know, scripture says that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Just by someone who, who has a relationship with Jesus Christ in that seat, the people and the righteous people of the earth are able to be blessed and rejoice. They don't even understand that correlation, that parallel. If they did, they'd be working tirelessly and ceaselessly, uh, ceaselessly for God's people to be in office, as you said at the start of the program, in every seat of power in the spheres. Awesome, awesome. I'm so excited about that. And uh, again, that's RolandRoberts.com. You go check him out, see what other things he believes on, on the economy and what he, what he believes about that and all the other kind of issues. You can go over there and check him out. Now, uh, Roland is a Republican, and so, you know, he said he's got his, he's picturing himself as David and he's got his, his rocks. And of course we know who Goliath is Roland. Goliath then is, is Donald Trump. He's, he's, he's your Goliath. Now uh, I, I got a question for you. Like what's your strategy to take him out? Well, the same that David's was, you know, what got Goliath in trouble was his mouth. That's oh. what cost him his life. And I don't think there's uh, that parallel is not lost on me. Uh, David would have never fought Goliath, except that he was coming out every day, blaspheming the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's when David was like, oh, no, that's not okay. That's not acceptable. Why aren't we taking this man out? He's blaspheming him. It was his mouth that got him into trouble. And I, I appreciate, actually, a lot of the economic policies uh, and, and some of the things with Israel that, that Trump did during his administration. Uh, but uh, once again, I think that our strategy against Donald Trump, uh, even though we have some similar economic policies, I'm running on economy, uh, national security and family. Uh, but I do believe that the strength of the family is the strength of the nation. And so my family is supportive and behind us in this. How we're planning to beat Trump is to uh, literally it's that precision shot between the eyes, uh, just like David did. It's not constantly wearing him down, attacking him. It's literally the battle belongs to the Lord. Uh, but I believe it's going to be a, it's a clear contrast. I, I'll be the non-Trump candidate uh, and then, you know, running against him. But it's night and day. Even the world, they want, uh, we've got to, for a 22nd century America, he's a president for the past. He wants retribution. He wants vengeance. He's not the same Trump of 2016 that inspired people. He, he's bitter this time. And uh, the very political weaponization of the justice systems he's decrying today are the very ones he will mobilize in office. And so uh, instead of speaking out of kind of both sides of our mouth, I believe that uh, people want sound wisdom, good governance, stable minded leadership today, uh, solving today's problems with tomorrow's solutions. And I've, I've got a vision for 22nd century America. Everybody else is playing the four year game. I'm trying to say I just had a son two and a half weeks ago, our first child, my wife and I. Wow. He's going to live, God willing, to 2100. Our grandchildren, if the Lord tarries, will live into the 22nd century. What is our education system going to look like? What kind of water will they be drinking? Well, if we don't fix the water crisis, uh, they're going to be drinking sand So, uh, and bacteria and, and other problems. As advanced as we think we are, we've actually declined in many ways as a civilization. And so we must have godly leadership uh, in America again. I love it. I don't know if you heard uh, uh, Robert Kennedy's speech before the Congress. Uh, I was really moved by that speech, to be honest with you. And it, it was refreshing to me to see that his, his call for to stop the divisiveness and we, we, we can't 
change what needs to be changed in America for both we're all divisive and our words right our words create division or they create unity and healing and the words are, are very powerful and being able to unite people again uh, to a common goal common vision uh, for a better America I think I think you're spot on brother I think let me tell you, there are three candidates that are non-establishment between both parties that are running for the office. Robert Kennedy, uh, me and Trump are the three non-establishment candidates running. Uh, I can tell you that out of those three, only two are interested in unifying the country and moving forward as a nation, not just as, uh, you know, making ourselves God, instead relying on the God of uh, the true and living God. Uh, and so there's two of us that can unify the, and uh, out of the non-establishment candidates. And uh, quite frankly, I would love to see a, uh, a Kennedy-Roberts matchup in the general election. Or yeah, he can yeah, be my yeah, that... president. We can look at that, too. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Okay, my friend, thank you for joining us at 83, here at 83K Academy. We're so glad that uh, you've joined us. We're here at 83K Academy. We have a passion to empower you to maximize your influence, right? So that you can make a greater impact, generate more income, to take care of your families while contributing to the kingdom of God. Thank you for joining us here on this broadcast. Please like, please share, please leave us a review. That helps us so much on our podcast and we appreciate you joining. We'll see you again next week. God bless and Godspeed.